So to conclude on the videos with um, undetermined coefficients method for solving second order non-homogeneous differential equations, I'm going to talk about the more general case in which you may have a, a differential equation of this form, by plus cy equals to a sum of functions of t. And in order to understand how this works, well, we know that so far we to obtain the general solution, we need to add the homogeneous solution plus whatever function uh, we find by um, making another function, we find determined coefficients out of this function. But because this is sum, this is also going to be a sum. So basically, for each of those separate functions in the sum, you're going to obtain a different function, capital Y, and then you're just going to add them up. So I'm going to show you that with a simple example here that is going to use the same solutions that we found for the previous videos. So let's say we have the differential equation y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y equals to e to t plus uh, 3t squared plus 4t minus 5 plus 4 cos 2t. So these three here are the three different functions that we had for the previous examples, but now we're combining them together into a single function. So how is this going to work? Well, we're still going to take the homogeneous solution, uh, which we found in the previous videos to be c1 e to the minus t plus c2 e to the minus uh, 3t. And we're going to take the individual solutions of each of these uh, separate functions. So we found that for the first one, so we're going to call that capital Y1, <coughs> that's going to be minus 1 over 3 e to the 2t, as we found in the previous examples. Y2, that's going to be what? That's going to be equal to minus t squared plus 1. And finally, Y3 is going to be the solution of this one which we found out to be 7 over 13 cos 2t minus 4 over 13 sine 2t. So what's the general solution? Well, y of t is going to be the sum of all these functions. So c1e to the minus t plus c2e to the 3t minus 1, 3, e to the 2t minus t squared plus 1 minus 7 over 13 cos 2t minus 4 over 13 sine 2t. So <coughs> this is a direct consequence of the linearity of the differential equation and this can only be done with dif uh, linear differential equations. So it's a, it's a really nice property and it allows us to solve complicated differential equations like this one by breaking it down into different functions. Now, before we move on to other types of differential equations, I want to make a final remark about what um, type of y functions we can get. So by y, I mean the capital Y. So we know that for an exponential, so I'm just going to draw it like this. We know that for an exponential, let's say that we have 3e to the 2t, we're going to choose a function, capital Y, equals to a e to t. All we do is we replace the constant by an undetermined coefficient. The problem is that if this function, so let's say that this function here is happens to be equal to uh, one of the solutions in the homogeneous case, so let's say that in our homogeneous case, we have something like e to the 2t plus c2e to the minus 3t. This is kind of a problem because this actually occurs here. So we cannot have the same function. So what, we would, what would we do in that case? Well, we would have to choose a different function. So instead of this, we would have to choose a function a t e to t. 
So basically, if the function is repeated in the homogeneous solution, we need to multiply this function by a t and then apply this, so we would find the derivative of this, we would have to use the product rule to find it, and then substitute back into the differential equation and then solve for a. So our final solution would actually have a term that is t to some power times e to the 2t and some coefficient at the front. The same is applicable to the case where you have something like ft equals to, let's say, a higher power, so a polynomial function like t cubed. Well, in that case, what you would need to do, first of all, your y function cannot just be t cubed. It has to be a full poly polynomial up to this order. So it would have to be a t cubed plus b t squared plus c t plus d. So that's a, a, fun, a remark that I forgot to mention in the previous videos. And whenever you have a polynomial function, you need to choose a function that is actually a full polynomial with all the different orders included in it. But if this solution happened to uh, occur in the homogeneous solution, then what you would need to do in that case is um, raise the power of this polynomial, and then that way you can actually solve for it, and it won't actually happen in the homogeneous solution. And finally, if you have a trigonometric function, so, or let's say you have a combination of those, so let's say you have f of t equals to some function like t cubed e 5t and cosine of 3t. Well, that is a power of three functions. That's a bit more complicated. But first, um, what you need to do is define y, is you will need to find it. First of all, cosine means that you're going to have to add cosine and sine terms. So this is going to be repeated in a sum. This means that you're going to have to add a full polynomial to it. So if we start with this one, let's have a t cubed plus b t squared plus c t plus d times e to the 5 t cosine of 3 t. And because this is a um, trigonometric function, we're going to add another part to it. So we're going to have more undetermined coefficients. We cannot use the same ones again. So we're going to have to uh, use more letters. So e f t squared plus e t plus h e to the 5 t sine 3 t. <clears throat> so that's essentially um, what we would have to do. And if uh, in this case, we don't need to worry about exponential because even if it happens in the homogeneous solution, we have to take into account that this is a product function, so it wouldn't count in it. But this is what you would have, and now you have eight undetermined coefficients to solve for, which is quite a task. But this is essentially how you would expand the method to more complicated functions like this one. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to solve for differential equations where you may have um, non-constant coefficients. So, so far we have been dealing with constant coefficients, but what happens when you have something like this? An x squared uh, times the derivative of y plus, let's say, another function of x, sine of x, y equals to zero. Well, the methods we have learned so far don't deal with this type of differential equations, so we need to use something different to solve them, and that's what we're going to deal with in the next few videos.